So hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, on today's video we're just down at Scorton. As you can see just behind me here we've got the Citroen van where I call up to, for coffee quite regular. Uh, on today's video we're going to be talking about a few things, extra bits of protection and the electrical things that I've added to the Triumph Tiger to get it ready for touring this summer. Also on the front you can see I've added the original screen, this is a new screen and I've popped the wind deflector back on, um, so I'll talk about why I've changed that. Great place to come, Scotland in Lancashire, lovely village and a really great food truck just behind me. So uh, we'll also be talking about some trips this year and uh, also a new thing that I've just bought for the trip, so uh, stay tuned for that. And I wanted to just uh, show you on the bike the little bits that I've added on. Uh, also, uh, just talk about the bikes that are coming in the week. Um, we've got a Triumph uh, Street Triple 765 RS Cosmic Yellow coming. And also I've got the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 Continental GT. Uh, or at least I hope it's the Continental GT. The email that came from Royal Enfield said it was the Interceptor 650. Now I've had that before. I wanted the Continental GT to uh, just see the differences. So those are arriving this week and we'll uh, bring you some content on those uh, in January, towards the end of January. Um, but today let me just turn the camera around and I'll show you which bits I've added to the, uh, the Tiger. Okay so under the seat you can't really see it um, but I've actually put a thunder box which is literally a box that goes onto the battery and uh, then it's got a uh, brain inside which switches uh, everything to live when the ignition's turned on. So um, I did find with the sat-nav, this is the Garmin XT that I have on the bike, that um, I plumbed it into where the phone socket is underneath the seat and it was switching itself off every now and then so I presume it wasn't getting enough draw from that um, so yeah with the Thunderbox on I've added um, literally just uh, Wago connectors just pop it onto there but also the SP Connect phone mount system where my phone goes just there so they're both switched now with the ignition which is great um, and also one thing I did um, I have on the bike so I have a couple of USB chargers just here and when that came I ordered that off Amazon it's nothing special but the lead on it was like three meters long or it was crazy so I tucked it underneath the dash just there what I've done is ordered another DIN socket and just uh, literally shortened the wire to six inches so it just plugs into the DIN and then I've no more wire rolling about which is great um, so I use that for touring literally just for plumbing uh, a wire into the tank bag just here for charging cameras and things so that's handy and then the other big thing um, when I crashed this bike I noticed on the bottom of the Tri-Link swing arm so just here um, that the bottom of the swing arm even when you lay this bike down even if you just drop it in a car park stationary it will mark the bottom the very bottom um, of that swing arm so I bought some Triumph swing arm protectors. These are ABS plastic that have gone onto there and screw underneath. Um, so there's one just there, you can see. And then I've added another one on the other side. Now on this side, I did mark the bottom of the swing arm just there. So those will protect it moving forward. Now a lot of people have been asking me about the DJI Action 4. How good is it as a vlogging camera? Um, well, I've used DJI since day one. Uh, never used GoPro, at least I did once and didn't like it and uh, I see too many issues with GoPro cameras so the DJI Action 4 um, when it came out um, it didn't have a microphone adapter so a 3.5mm uh, adapter which they've now got which I'll show you um, what I've done is I've bought this to try it out to see if it will work with a 3.5mm um, mic, lavalier mic inside the helmet uh, the lavalier mic that I put inside the helmet is actually a Drift Innovation one. Uh, this is the preferred one that I've used in the past. So there is the DJI Action 4. As you can see we've got the mic adapter which actually clicks in two places where the actual door for the charge port uh, comes out the side of it. 
Uh, I've got the three and a half millimeter jack in there. Also, it has a charging function, USB-C in the side. I'm not sure whether you can charge it on the go once you've got the mic plugged in though. I need to test whether that works or not because somebody told me it didn't. But yeah, inside the camera now you've got, um, I think, plus 20 to minus 20. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll put it on screen if not. Um, so I've got it set down to minus 11 d dB currently. And I've been testing that on the way down here. I'll be testing that over the next couple of rides. Um, I've also got my Instamic in my tank bag, um, but this was in my side my helmet. So this here is an Instamic. Uh, it's nothing to do with Insta360. And on the back of that, I've just got a magnet, and that actually sits inside on a magnet inside my helmet in the mouth uh, section. And uh, basically, that is what I currently use and have been using for the last couple of years uh, on the channel. It's a professional recording, separate mic. Um, my only downside is I have to uh, sync up in uh, in the edit of the video, uh, the actual audio to the camera. Um, so what I'm hoping now is that now the DJI have bought the mic adapter out, that it will actually work now with a 3.5mm and also that we won't capture too much wind noise and just the voice and a little bit of the bike. So, uh, yeah, I'll be doing a dedicated video on the results of that in a couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. Now, a few of you have been asking about the Bonneville. Um, she's all tucked up in the garage, and I'll be using that from March onwards. That is my preferred motorcycle um, to keep, so I wanted to keep it salt-free and off the salt roads. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be taking that out during the winter. Now, trips this year. Where am I going? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, and I think I've also put it on the Facebook uh, post as well as the um, YouTube community, um, I'm doing a big trip um, mid-July, I think it is, down to Turkey. So I'm going to be taking in um, UK, France, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, and then down to Turkey, where I'll stay for a week with the family to have a holiday, and then take a different route back, I think. And another trip I want to do, which will probably be a four or five day trip, um, probably the beginning of summer, so potentially April, May time. And that's down to the Vosges Mountains in France. Um, I watched a, uh, a YouTuber uh, that headed down there um, a couple of weeks ago and it looked really, really nice. And also I've always wanted to go to Colmar in France, which is really picturesque. So I'm going to head down there and do a long weekend or five days. So that's another trip. Um, and then going to get back into the camping trips again in the UK. So we're going to be doing some of those throughout the year. And also I still need to get down to Spain. At some point this year I will go and potentially do the uh, the Picos, which has always been on the bucket list. So uh, stay tuned for some great trips this year. Okay, so there's one thing that I needed to uh, replenish in the uh, the camera stock since I had my accident. And if you watch the uh, the crash that I had on ice over winter uh, on the Tiger, you'll know that in the same day uh, my quick shifter stopped working. So that was the first item. They always say it comes in threes. Then I had the crash on the ice, which wasn't pleasant. Um, but then after that, I also lost my uh, DJI Mini 2 drone um, in Buttermere and literally flew it into the lake. Now, uh, on the two previous drones, I've had a crash with the first one which was the Mini, the first one that came out, and I put that in a river, so um, both of those drones have gone swimming. Um, and both of those drones, actually the first one did have sensors on it, but I turned the sensors off, big mistake. Uh, the second one, cheaper version, didn't have sensors. Obviously, if I'd have had sensors on at that time, I probably wouldn't have crashed into uh, Buttermere. So, yeah, I've gone out and bought myself a new drone. Um, with all the trips coming up this year, it'd be a, a real disappointment if I didn't have a drone to capture some of that beautiful footage going through all of those countries. So, uh, yeah, so I've just been down to the local Argos, and I've just picked up the new DJI Mini 4 Pro uh, with full 360 degree sensors on and the new controller so I don't have to put my phone um, into the controller it's got a built-in screen so let's have a look at that okay so new DJI Mini 4 Pro 249 gram and as you can see 
and has the new controller as well with it which is great so need to uh, just tell the wife now that she bought me that for my birthday <laughs> okay let's get back on the road so the Priory Hotel there just on the right nice ice cream place little Citroen van spa uh, I featured this place on the channel plenty of times but it is a super super little village beautiful little cottages and just a damn nice place to come for a, uh, a little coffee and a snack of a weekend so I'll give you a little glimpse of what the DJI mic adapter sounds like so I'm gonna switch to it now this is actually coming through my insta mic that you're listening to me on this video but we'll count down three two one now this is the sound that you have through the new DJI 4 mic adapter with the 3.5 millimeter microphone how does it sound does it sound good obviously speed wise we're doing about uh, 30 miles an hour just now my screens in its low position how does the sound come through is it uh, acceptable as a, uh, a lavalier mic straight into the camera or not you tell me um, but it certainly will make my life a lot easier when editing videos to have the uh, the audio already on to the camera and not having to uh, sync up my insta mic separately every time I edit a video now I have two insta mics I've actually put one via magnetic on top of the tank bag just here so I'm just capturing the uh, the engine noise through that one something that I don't do normally so we'll just see how that comes out and uh, on my phone there you can see there's two devices one the insta mic in the helmet which I'm talking back on now by the way three two one back in the room so back on the insta mic and then um, yeah I just sync them both on the uh, the phone app and uh, just start recording just steaming up a bit now we've got some really dark clouds coming in so I'm gonna try and uh, get home before that rain comes down it's about 12 12 15 just now and then the rain's meant to be here about one o'clock so I might have just timed this a little bit wrong so we might uh, might be in a an amazing storm shortly look at that how dark is that I don't know whether the camera picks it up properly but yeah what an amazing sight Sun behind me rain in front of me anyway uh, it's been a great uh, great time to get out on the bike again I did uh, change the oil and the filter on the motorcycle a couple of days ago and also I changed the, uh, the drive shaft oil now the bike itself let me just go into the menu when I bought this bike it had about uh, 3,500 miles on it and we're about uh, 8,800 miles just now so literally I've done five and a half thousand miles on uh, on the new tires that I put on as soon as I got this bike which are the uh, Pirelli Scorpion Trail 2 tires so I've done about 5,500 miles currently on those and uh, the first service is well the first service is done that was done at 845 miles I believe or just before and I need to have it serviced by Triumph because they need to turn the uh, little spanner light off in 2000 miles so that will just sit nicely for the summer um, in between I don't leave it 10,000 miles per service I generally change the oil and filter every 3000 miles and uh, when I change the uh, 
the gear oil in the drive shaft a couple of days ago the stuff that came out was really really clean so really happy that there's no swarf or anything in the uh, the drive shaft on this bike so all good so yeah I'm gonna try and head home get home before this rain and uh, the next video will be on the uh, the Triumph Street Triple 765RS so uh, stay tuned for that and uh, we'll catch you soon guys uh, if you're not a subscriber to the channel then don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that notification bell for videos coming up not to miss them uh, but most importantly guys please 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 if you can give the video a big like and that all helps the uh, the youtube algorithm and uh, yeah let's see where we can take the channel this year catch you on another one soon ciao for now